I recently reconnected with markers and I've been having so much fun with them so I thought I would share my process and some tips I've learned along the way but before we start I just wanted to say a quick thank you to FlexiSpot who are kindly sponsoring this video but more on that a bit later. So there are many ways you can use alcohol markers but the way I like to use them currently is in a more illustrative way. I do less blending and I'm focused less on realism which I also know is a very cool way to use them. Um, I did these strawberries which was so much fun to do and I'll actually show you how I do them in this video and I've been so surprised at how a more simple approach with markers gives such a cool result. So today I wanted to do a sketchbook spread full of things that I've been enjoying in spring to remember my spring and it was kind of like a mindful exercise of being grateful of all the things I've been enjoying and I'm using my Stillman and Burn Zeta series sketchbook which I don't think is specifically for markers but I love how the paper takes the marker like it keeps the vibrancy of the colour and the ink doesn't spread out it does bleed onto the other page which is something I've gotten a lot of questions about but I find the bleeding um, depends a lot on how much blending you do but I think you're going to get this with all sketchbooks and alcohol markers I just skip the page if it goes through too much so my approach with marker illustrations is starting with a very simple pencil sketch from my reference photos most of these I took myself because they were things that I either had or were symbolizing something that I was enjoying throughout spring and then I go over them in a fine line ink pen and I use the Sakura Pigma Micron pen and I like a thinner line versus a thicker one. So I think this was a 0.05. And I drew a range of things that had different textures which were really fun to try to achieve with the markers. And I thought I would start with something I've already done before with markers which is a tulip. And this particular tulip I photographed on one of the first really sunny spring days where I live. So it was the perfect illustration to symbolize the start of spring. I always have a piece of paper next to me to test out the colours and how they combine with each other. Even if I've done a big swatching grid with all the colours, it's really useful to do this so I can see my colour selection next to each other. I always start with the lightest colour and I build from there and I try to limit myself to about three colours per area. So for example with the stalk and the leaves of this tulip, I want to get enough colour variation so that I can achieve the depth. But I find that using three or less colours allows me to get that range really well. And my aim isn't to copy the colours exactly because I have a limited selection of markers so I'm not necessarily concentrating on likeness to the photo. But I want to capture the essence of what I'm drawing. I really focus on value and this is something you may have heard me talk about before in other videos but in being able to get those lighter and darker areas really contrasting you can achieve depth and so even if the colours are not super realistic or you deviate from the colours completely from your reference photo you can still get that depth and I ended up using one more darker green to get those really dark shadows in the tulip leaves and the stalk. Another spring favourite of mine is my flexi spot desk and I've used it daily since I got it. I have the Comhair all-in-one standing desk which is such a perfect size. It's not too big so it doesn't take up a load of space but it's big enough to have all my art supplies and lights on it comfortably. This desk has been a game changer for me because I can adjust the height of it so I can paint and draw sitting or standing which really helps if I want to take breaks from a certain posture and it has preset buttons so I can have my favourite heights recorded. It also has a USB-C port which I love because I record my overhead shots for my videos with my phone so I can have my phone connected while I do that and this little drawer where I keep all my tech stuff handy is so useful. If you're interested in trying it I'll have a link in the description box that you can use and they have a 30 day risk free return policy so you can see how it works for you. I really really recommend it. Okay, so back to the illustrations. Strawberries always remind me of spring and I've been really enjoying them. And with strawberries, I found the same thing that with three colors, I could achieve such a vibrant and 3D type illustration. So I start by putting down the light pink where the highlights go. Then I put red all over the body of the strawberry and some dashes where the seeds go in the highlighted area. And as you can see, I'm being very kind of messy with this. It's not precise it's not neat and that's what I love so much because the end result looks so like graphic even though I wasn't being neat or precise. Then with the darker red I add the parts in shadow and I do this in dashes too to give the illusion of seeds 
And as you can see, I'm not doing any blending. This is really layering the markers on top of each other. And it's really the gel pen that brings everything together with the highlights. I use this white gel pen and I add little dots and semicircles to highlight the different textures of the strawberry. I did a mini tutorial of these for Instagram and TikTok and people were so shocked at how simple it actually is. And I did this double spread of them and I enjoyed it so much because I really got lost in the flow as it was repetitive and you don't have to think too much. And the result is really satisfying. So I definitely recommend to give these a go, especially if you want to try markers or reconnect with them again. I think this really shows the power of markers and being really simple with your approach. Then for the leaves, I just used two greens and I didn't blend them. I just followed where the dark and light areas were from the reference and put down those colours. So something else I've been really doing a bit more of this spring is listening to audiobooks as I'm part of a little online book club, which is really getting me back into reading. And I found that with listening to books, I can draw or paint really well along to them. So I drew my headphones to symbolize my audiobook phase that I'm currently in. And this was an illustration where I used only four markers. So three sh shades of gray and then one shade of green for the case. To make sure the illustration uh, was cohesive, I tried to use greys from the same family. So three cool greys that varied in how dark or light they were. And as I said before, I wasn't trying to blend loads or make the blending, blending seamless with this. I like being able to see lines between the areas of color. Like I really like that style. And I also remembered to leave the white of the page to come through for the highlights. I also discovered that layering the same marker colour and therefore making the page more or less saturated with the marker can produce different values and playing with that can really give you depth. My natural inclination coming from more of a painting approach is to want to layer different colours to get darker values but because I have a limited selection of colours with my markers I found that layering the same colour can help the illustration be more cohesive. I actually did this illustration before, um, I, I didn't even film it, I was just kind of having fun and trying to draw different things that were around me. And I did use different greens to try and get that depth and, and make it look more 3D, but I just found that it didn't look quite right. And by just using the one marker and layering it where I needed to layer it, I actually felt like I achieved the depth a lot more. One way that markers remind me a bit of gouache is that they colour shift slightly. So when you put them down on paper, they're darker and as the alcohol ink dries up, they go lighter. So this is something to keep in mind when you are using them. I ended up oversaturating the case a bit too much because I wasn't allowing the ink to dry. So I kept thinking I needed more colour and the paper ended up speckly, which is what happens when you oversaturate it. Then I went in and darkened some areas to really amp up the contrast between the highlights and the shadows and this really helps achieve that shiny effect from the plastic. My fourth illustration was this fabric wristband that I got from a concert that I went to for my birthday in New York City and it was such a highlight of my year so far that I really wanted to record it as part of my spring favourites. So I used three different shades of blue and made sure to let the white highlights come through and I also approached this with a very light hand. Um, definitely being mindful of the pressure when you use alcohol markers is very useful as you can vary the level of color that you're laying down on the paper depending on how much pressure you're putting on the marker. Then I did the writing with the fine line pen and I really like how this turned out. I think I captured the fabric effect and it really was an illustration for me because I don't think it really says much visually to anyone else but it reminds me of that special moment. Then I had to draw a tube of gouache paint as this is a permanent favourite of mine and I've done this before but I found that I used way too many different markers and I think the outcome of that is that it doesn't look as cohesive. So for this one I again used three shades of grey for the metallic part of the tube which I think really helps simplify it. And I just followed the reference photo I took. I always look at my references as shapes so rather than seeing the tube as a whole 
I broke it down into different shapes that all the bends and folds of the tube makes. And this is a really great way of simplifying what's in front of you and helps you know what colors to put down because you're breaking it into smaller, more manageable areas. For the purple part of the tube, I actually only use one marker color, this purple, and I just layered it in different areas more so than others. So it looked darker and that's how it looked like it was folding like paint tubes do. So I believe this is when I introduced the second grey marker which was a bit darker but as you can see I was able to achieve a really wide uh, value range with just one grey colour which I found really interesting and has kind of like been groundbreaking for me in using markers because it really simplifies the process you don't need a ton of colours to create that value range um if you've used markers before i'm probably not saying anything very interesting but but i think knowing this and using it as a strength in your illustrations can be really groundbreaking <laughs> i think another great thing to have when using markers is a white gel pen whether it's for writing on top of the markers or adding highlights this is the jelly roll um gel pen in white i'll link it down below and it shows up so so well and opaquely on top of markers so I really recommend this one. I haven't tried many others but this one has worked amazingly. And of course reconnecting with alcohol markers meant that it was also one of my springtime favourites so I drew a marker. And for the body of the marker, I again used three different shades of grey, which I think were the exact same shades of grey that I've been using for the other grey things on this spread. Um, and I just think it, they work so well together. So the white gel pen is great for adding small highlights, but for larger highlights like the one on this pen, it's a lot better to leave the white page coming through. And this took me a bit of practice to get used to because I've never found negative space painting or in this case drawing very easy. But using markers has helped me think about my approach differently as I have to go from light to dark, which is different to how I use gouache. Another amazing moment for me this spring was this incredible vegan Oreo cheesecake that I ate at this vegetarian diner and I had to record this um, and I also want to start illustrating food more beyond the fruit that I do because I'm very intrigued by food illustration and I hadn't done an illustration like this before so I was not knowing where to start but I selected my colours and I made sure to stick to my less is more approach so I think I had about three different colours the two darker shades of brown and the beige colour and I applied my approach of layering the colours to get darker and lighter values and honestly having less colours is the best approach if you're just starting with markers because it's just way less intimidating. The trickiest part was the cream of the cake because I had to use the white of the page as the highlights and I had to really focus on the shapes the shadows of the cream were making to have it look three-dimensional. Overall, I think I really captured the essence of this cake and I'm really happy how it turned out.
Okay, so my final illustration had to be some nail polish and this is the Essie Sugar Daddy shade, which I wear a lot. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I do my nails a lot in different colors and I do them myself. So it's part of a routine that I like to do. And so I really wanted to illustrate a little bottle of nail polish. So by this point, I felt like I was in the flow with markers and I think that for this illustration, I only used three marker colors. Um, the pink was the only pink that I used. So just one marker for the pink area and I just layered on top of it to darken the value of it. And then I used two shades of grey for the lid and also the glass effect of the bottle. And I really like how this turned out actually. When I finished the illustrations, I felt like the white of the page needed something, so I added some hearts and stars in pastel colours, and this ended up really reminding me of those teenage magazine spreads from the 2000s. It was a vibe and I liked how it looked. I really hope you enjoyed illustrating with me and that some of the tips I shared were useful for you. Also let me know if you have any other video requests or questions about markers and please do give this video a thumbs up if it was useful for you, it really really helps me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!